battle that's already been won, but here's the great thing. The reason why we have confidence is because the battle was already won for us. And it was won by one named Jesus Christ, who was God made man, manifest in the flesh, who came and defeated the law of sin, defeated death. Amen. He went to the cross for our sins. He was buried in a tomb, and then he rose again. And that resurrection power is still alive today. And it's alive today through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And if you're in this room and you've never been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I want you to know tonight can be your night. That means if you have never spoken in other tongues as the Spirit gives you the utterance, then you have an experience. God has an experience for you that you have yet to receive. In the book of Acts chapter 19, there were a group of believers And those group of believers transitioned from just being believers to receivers. They transitioned from just believing in Jesus to receiving His Spirit. And I want you to know if you've never been filled with His Spirit, it's for you. The Bible says it is a promise. And that is for you. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight on a Wednesday evening. I do realize that it's Wednesday night of camp meeting. I know that our our pastor we have those in our church who are in Lufkin tonight and I am glad that they had the opportunity to get away my wife and I plan on making the trip down there tomorrow night look forward to what God's going to do I believe he's going to move mightily in Lufkin but I do believe he can move mightily at Longview First Church tonight what a spirit of the Lord we have felt already tonight here's the thing You know, God doesn't just pick a week on the calendar at camp meeting and decide, you know, I'm really going to pour out my spirit then, or I'm really going to speak to them then. But you got to understand, there's just such great expectation that goes into those services at camp meeting. Because there's a group of people from all over the state that drive distances to go to church. They put effort. They, they invest money into hotels to stay. And they take time off from work. And they have great expectation for what God will do. And so I believe if we will just have expectation that he will do something in our midst here tonight, that he will honor that. Go with me in the word of the Lord to Matthew chapter 9. We're going to be reading verses 35 through 38. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 through 38. I give honor to our pastor for allowing me the opportunity to stand in the pulpit here tonight. Every opportunity I get to preach the word of the Lord, I am honored, privileged, not worthy, but by the Spirit and the forgiveness of of Jesus Christ, I stand here today, and I do believe I have a word Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, the Lord dropped this passage of scripture on my heart, and it, I, I, I've, uh, you know, I prayed for direction for this service, and I, I just could not get away uh, from, from this, this portion of scripture, and so I hope it'll bless you tonight, I hope it will challenge you, um, I'm Thankful to be here in church. Thankful that you're here. Thank you to all of our guests that have joined us. Um, So many faces that I don't know. I hope to get to know more. Um, But I just believe God wants to speak to us tonight. Matthew chapter 9, beginning in verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness And every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. I want you to know we live in a time where there are people who are scattered abroad. We live in a time where there are people who live as sheep that do not have a shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, it's after Jesus sees these that are lost, these that are scattered. He then turns to his disciples and he makes this statement. 
The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. With the help of the Lord, I want to preach under this title, Laborers for the Harvest. Laborers for the harvest. Amen. Would you lay your Bibles down and could we just one more time ask that God would have his way in this place tonight? I'm asking you that you would pray. Father, we thank you for everything that we have felt tonight. I pray you'd hide me behind the cross. I believe that you've given me a word. I pray that you would help me to deliver. Jesus, I pray for every ear. I pray that it would hear the word of the Lord tonight. I pray, God, that the church would have an ear to hear. I pray, God, that I would preach not a word more and not a word less than what it is that you want to say. I believe there's something you want to accomplish in this place tonight. We surrender it to you. I pray the gifts of the Spirit would be in operation. I pray, Jesus, that this would not just be another service, but you would move mightily in our midst. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. You may be seated. I started to say we didn't have that big of a crowd, but I'm looking around now, and this is a great crowd. Amen. Especially for Wednesday night of camp meeting. Uh, if you don't know, um, I, for many of you, I'm sure I'm not going to be the first person to uh, tell you this, but maybe I am the first person, and if I am the first person, I will be glad to deliver this news to you tonight, but um, I, I say this in confidence, I say this not because it's something that should be said of, 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 of a church member, um, but, but I, I believe this with all my heart, I believe this through prayer, I believe this through just observation of, of what the Lord has been doing in our midst, um, that we've got, we, we, I want you to know that the future of Longview First Church is bright. Like I said, I don't think I'm breaking uh, groundbreaking news to, to many of you, but, but I, I, I believe that. I, honestly, I, I believe that the future of, of Longview First Church is bright. I, I, there are so many that are more qualified than I to give a story about the journey and, and the time that Longview First Church has been in existence. I don't even know the number of years. I just know it's a long time. But what I can tell you is something that struck me uh, when I first, uh, when my wife and I were first privileged to be able to worship here. Um, something that struck me uh, very, very soon is in 2018, uh, Longview First Church moved into the facility that, that we're in here tonight. Um, and, and, and we, the church, Longview First Church, was worshiping in what is now our fellowship hall. And then soon after that, two, three, two and a half, three years after they were in the fellowship hall and we had just moved into a new facility, it was time. We already, the, the, the Longview First Church had already outgrown the fellowship hall. And it was time to transition a gymnasium into a sanctuary. And that's where you're sitting tonight is what used to be a gym is, is now a, a worship sanctuary for us to be together. And it was because what we had was not, the, on Alpine Road, which was the previous location, it wasn't enough to house what God was doing. It wasn't enough to house in the fellowship hall what God was doing. And here recently where we have been only for a few, a few years, maybe a year and a half to two years, what we are experiencing is a, a good problem, but it's a same problem that we've seen before, is where we're at right now is not enough room to house what God is doing. I want you to know that that is not common. I, I want you to know that there are places in the denominal world that are closing their doors 
doors day after day. It's not, it's not something that you see very often for a church to be in building program after building program and to continually be looking towards growth. And so I am thankful for what God has done. I am thankful, but I want you to know the greatest days are ahead and they are not behind. The future of Longview First Church is bright and we've got a great pastor and I'm thankful for it and we've got a great church but I want to tell you our confidence is not in the people that are here but our confidence is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he shed his blood years and years ago and he purchased us with his own blood and I have a promise that goes all the way back to a prophet named Joel who said in the last days saith God I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and we are seeing a fulfillment of the prophecy that Joel gave you may not realize it but we've been praying people through to the Holy Ghost we've been baptizing people in the name of the Lord Jesus and that's still something to rejoice about that's still something to be excited about that's still something if it was just one person I'd be very thankful but my goodness when it's multiple and when it's continuing to happen we look and we give glory to God we don't give glory to ourselves but there's one thing that's undeniable is that we are seeing that this latter rain is greater than the former rain we are living in times that give us confidence that we are part of the end time church and I want you to know we are currently in revival amen we're not looking for revival we're currently in revival again I don't have the number but my goodness my wife and I we've been privileged recently We've had more opportunities to, to preach out, and with Brother Moore's permission, we have accepted those invitations. And so there's been a few Sundays over the last uh, few months that we have been out of town on Sunday morning. But every time we're here, the faces that I see, every Sunday it seems like there's a new face. Every Sunday it seems like there's somebody that I haven't seen before. And that's exciting. That's exciting because the harvest is starting to make its way into this church house. House, and that is exciting. And I want you to know that we are in revival. But I'm, Brother Pruitt, I'm not satisfied with what's happened. I'm still hungry for more. I'm still hungry for God to do more in this church. I'm still hungry to see more people filled with the Holy Ghost. I am still hungry to see miracles, signs, and wonders. I am still hungry to see somebody delivered. I'm still hungry to see somebody's life change. I'm still hungry to see God do the impossible. I am still hungry to see, Lord, thank you for what you have done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But God, I pray that you're only scratching the surface I pray God that you are going to do what your word says that you will do exceeding abundantly above all that we may ask or think what that means is that God is well able to go above what we ask him to do God is well able to go above what we could even think what we could even dream for this church to be I'm telling you that God can go above that he can go above our wildest dreams he can go above what we ask but my goodness I want to be one that continues to ask I want to be one that realizes the gravity of the situation that realizes there's momentum and if there was ever a time to be bought in if there was ever a time to look to put my hand to the plow it is right now if ever there was a time to look to get involved if ever there was a time 
to transition from somebody that's got to be pumped up and encouraged to come to church. If ever there was a time to transition from needing to be preached to, to preaching to somebody else, don't misunderstand me. We always got to continue to hear the word of the Lord. But if ever there was a time for the church to arise, if ever there was a time for the church to believe what we say, we believe. If ever there was a time for the church to just go ahead and every time we see somebody that's sick, we just lay hands on them and we say in the name of Jesus, be made whole. In the name of Jesus, work a miracle. If ever there was a time to get out into the highways and the byways and to let those know that are lost that we have something that this world does not have. And make no mistake, we still have something that others do not have. And it's not anything that can be bought with corruptible things, but it is a treasure that is in it is a treasure that is eternal. It's not a treasure that's temporary, but it is a treasure that is eternal. It's something that you can't take from me. And that is the Spirit of God that is alive and well today. Ah, I believe we are in revival. I don't just believe it, but I know it. Hallelujah. But I want to continue to have the perspective that there is still so much more that God wants to do. We can't afford to be complacent. I don't want to be complacent with where I'm at. Verse 35 of our scripture text. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sickness, every disease among the people. I still believe that God is a healer. I do. I do. And it's easy when we pray. It's easy. We're, we're, we're growing into a large church. There are going to be times where we bring needs before the congregation and we ask God to work a miracle or we ask God to perform a work of healing and he doesn't do it. There are going to be times where that happens. But that doesn't mean that he's not a healer. That doesn't mean that he's not a miracle worker. If we will just hold on to faith. But my faith is in the miracle worker. My faith is in the one that has the power to work the healing. My faith is not just in healing or my faith is not just in a miracle but it's the one who can work the miracle and the great thing about that is whether he touches my body or not I have him. Whether he comes through and he delivers me or not I still have him and because I have him but let's not stop believing that he's a healer or that he's a miracle worker. Verse 36, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Because they fainted, they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. As I was studying before, as I was preparing to preach tonight, it was that word in verse 36 that just seemed to jump out of the page at me, and it was that word compassion. You see, it says that when Jesus saw people that were lost, he had compassion. When he saw people that were scattered, when he saw people that had no direction, when he saw people that were lost, he was moved with compassion on them. God immediately began to speak into my spirit and to challenge me. When was the last time that I prayed for compassion? Yes, I've prayed that God would add to His church. Yes, I pray that He would pour out His spirit like never before. But when was the last time that I asked Him to baptize me with compassion? You see, we still have to be a compassionate people. When Jesus would do the works, the mighty works that He would do, the Bible tells us He was moved on. He was moved to pray for them. He had compassion. I said when I was reading this scripture text, but we are living in a time where there are people who are scattered. 
You see, in the church, the Word of God is what we stand on. The Word of God, that build, I build my life the best I can upon the Word of God. What He says is true, that's true. What He says is right, that's what's right. I may not agree sometimes. Listen, if you live for God any time, you're going to be offended by something that the Word says. You're going to be offended all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God at very surface level. You're offended enough to, oh my goodness, I'm wrong. I need to do something about it. I need to do something about it. Compassion. Compassion for the lost people in this world. I look and I see those in the world who the Bible calls, who, who the Bible calls lost. And if I'm not careful, those lost people, when they act like lost people, if I am not careful, and if I am not careful to have compassion, then when I see lost people acting like lost people, I'm just being honest, and maybe I'm the only one, but if I'm not careful, anger can begin to arise. Anger, a, a feeling of disgust. How, how, how quickly we forget where God has brought us from. How quickly we forget, but we're not exempt from this feeling. I may just be talking to myself. But when I look at our world and where we are at today, lost people acting like lost people, people but when I talk to my brothers and sisters in Christ about what they're doing I'm not speaking in compassion but we've got to be speaking in compassion I'm gonna hit, I felt led to talk about this and if it's wrong I, I repent you can I, brother Moore can correct me and make it all right on Sunday I believe the Word of God when it says that marriage is between one man and one woman. I believe the Word of God when it says we are made in His image and He created us male and female. That is a biblical truth that at Longview First Church we stand behind. We stand behind that. And that's growing increasingly unpopular to say but it's true. And I've got to stand by the Word of God. But I'm going to tell you, and I'm being honest with me, and I felt in prayer that there's at least one other person that this has been applicable to. But when I look at that community who's confused about that truth, when I look at that community who has sin in their life, and the sin causes them to do certain things that I know is not right, but it's just sin. But I look at that group of people and if I'm not careful, I look at lost people who are confused. And I see what they want to do to children that I love and children that I see. And if I'm not careful, I'll begin to have anger. And I'll begin to have disgust in my heart. And pretty soon, every conversation I'm having is, can you believe they're doing this? And can you believe they're doing that? But I'm not God on my face and begin to pray for compassion. Listen, sin is still sin. Right is right and wrong is is wrong but I want it to be at Longview First Church that we remain compassionate that we remain people that look at no matter what the sin is no matter what lifestyle we're praying that God bring them out of you're welcome to come you're welcome to come you're welcome to come I hope you can say that tonight I know we're in East Texas but they are welcome we're not going to 
We won't give them a license to sin, but they are welcome. They are welcome. They are welcome. And you know what? There's a harvest of lost sheep who are confused about what gender to love. But if we will show compassion, if we'll open up the word of God to them, there's a whole nother community that have been ostracized that we can reach. I feel that in the Holy Ghost so strong. There is a community of people that need the church to arise in compassion. We got to stay on the word of God. We can't back up one inch, but we should start praying for compassion. We should start praying for love. Because in this end time harvest, the laborers of the harvest have got to be people of love. The laborers of the harvest have got to be people that speak life. I I think we're live streaming tonight. Listen, I've got family, close family, that are part of that community. And I need them to be saved. Just as much as I want the alcoholic to be saved, the fornicator to be saved, the drug addict to be saved. There is a harvest. There is a harvest. Oh, there's a harvest. And it was after, it was after Jesus makes this statement. After, excuse me, after Jesus sees the sheep as they're scattered abroad, after he sees that they have no shepherd. I don't believe, verse 37, Brother Long, I could be wrong. I don't believe Jesus began to speak in just a loud, bolsterous, exciting voice. No, I can picture the man, Jesus Christ, with a tear that begins to roll down his face as he's moved with compassion. And he begins to say in verse 37, after seeing the people who have no shepherd, after seeing the people who are lost, he says to his disciples in verse 37, and I believe it's somewhat in agony says the harvest it is plenteous but the laborers are few I've heard that preached I've heard that preach swinging from the chandeliers and I'm not trying to say that that's wrong but I just believe that Jesus Maybe with a little bit of a broken heart. After he sees the lost people and he says the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Because Jesus, as God himself, knows this. And it's a biblical fact that there will always be more lost people than people who are willing to reach for them. That's not why it's opinion. That's pulling from Scripture. The harvest are those who have no shepherd. The harvest are the ones who Jesus Christ is not leading their life. That's the harvest. And it's plenteous. The laborers are supposed to be Longview First Church. That's you and I. So let's do this. The lost is plenteous. But the laborers are few. There will always be. There will always be more. There will always be more lost people than the, than the laborers who are willing to reach for them and pull for them. And so what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that there has got to awaken in us an urgency to be a laborer. Our problem is not that there's not a harvest. But are there laborers? Are there laborers? The harvest truly is plenteous. But the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. I'm going to try to be done in six minutes. I want to go back to what I said 
at the beginning of this message that I preach tonight, I believe that the future of Longview First Church is so great. I also want to say this, those of you maybe that were here Sunday morning, you may have heard the announcement that over the next month and a half, my wife and I are going to be transitioning out of the role of youth pastor. And we believe that it's the will of God for us to go. Brother Moore's on board with it. The moment that we felt God speak to us, we sat down with him. I believe, I believe that I would never do anything without the approval of a pastor. I wanted to get his covering. And so that's true, and I want to say I'm so thankful my wife and I have cried so much because we were in a place where my family's five hours away and her family's four hours away, and so you guys have become our family. You guys have treated us like family. You've loved us like family, and thank you so much. Thank you so much. And so I realize, I realize that, 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 that there may be some that say, well, it's, in, it's ingenuous for him to say that, you know, he believes the future's bright because look at him leaving. But listen, it's not dependent on me. I'm telling you that I believe that this church, I'm just telling you, I believe in the people that are here. I believe it's strategically positioned. I'm not necessarily prophesying right now, but there's no reason that this church doesn't have to be 500 people plus. I'm just telling you that that's the kind of thing that I believe that the Spirit is wanting because because uh, harvest is not our problem. Uh, And so to let you know I love you, uh, I'm so thankful for this church, uh, but I believe in the Holy Ghost, uh, but there is still some more laborers to be born. Uh, The harvest is ready, uh, but the laborers uh, are few. Uh, I believe like never before, uh, there needs to be some laborers at Longview First Church. Stand all across this house. Harvest will always be plenteous. You see, when the Bible makes a statement, Sister Long, it's forever true. So it's forever true that the harvest is plenteous. But it is also forever true that the laborers are few. You can't separate those two. Listen, we're in a church right now. Right now. I don't know how many people are here tonight. We probably got close to 100 if I'm guessing. Just because you're part of a church doesn't mean you're a laborer. What does it look like to labor? Well, prayer. Praying for the people that are lost. If you're here tonight and you're saying, I want to be a laborer, go to prayer. And don't just pray for the needs that you have in your life. But begin to pray for the people who are lost in Longview. Begin to pray for the people who do not have the shepherd that we have. Begin to pray for those who are addicted. Begin to pray for those who don't have a revelation of the mighty God in Christ Jesus. Begin to pray kingdom prayers. That's how you can be a laborer. Pray. Pray in the Spirit. If you're Holy Ghost filled, don't be afraid to continue to pray until you break through in the Spirit. When you begin to pray in tongues, it's not gibberish, but the Bible says when we know not what to pray, the Spirit, the Spirit will begin to pray through us. And it will begin to do, it will begin, the things that we don't even know we need to pray, the Spirit will begin to pray. If you're here and you're saying, I want to be a laborer, you need to pray. But also, if you want to be a laborer, there's many ways that you can do this. But you know what? If you want to be a laborer, find somebody that's lost and become their friend. Find somebody that's lost and become their friend. You got friends at this church. I'm so thankful for godly apostolic friends. But I also have friends that are not apostolic. And it's not because I don't love apostolics, but it's because I know that the harvest is plenteous. But the only way that someone's really going to give me an avenue into their heart, but the only way that they're really going to allow me to speak into their life is if I love them, if I'll be their friend. Maybe before I ever even open the Bible, I take them to dinner and I purchase their dinner. Or maybe before I ever invite them to church I sit down with them and I say hey how can I help you do you need groceries hey do you need someone to just uh, come and sit with your kids and y'all have a date night I I don't know you you fill in the blanks for yourself but be friends with somebody oh this is okay tonight I just want to talk to us about being laborers 
because we're in revival. I want to do something real fast. If you're in this room and pastor at one point in your walk with God taught you a weekly Bible study, would you raise your hand? Would you raise your hand? Pastor Moore, raise them high if you, if you don't mind. Pastor Moore, at one point in your life has taught you a home Bible study. Okay, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, so that's eight, and there's so many more. There's a lot that are out tonight, I just know. I want you to know I want to brag on our pastor for just a moment. He is a man of God. He is awesome, but I'm going to tell you he's also a soul winner. And I want you to know he is a laborer. I gotta be careful when I say this, but 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 there are those out there who pastor a church that aren't necessarily la- that necessarily laborers. I'm not trying to speak against the ministry at all. Those are those are the minority. Those are those are few and far between. But I want you to know we are at a church where we have a pastor that is a laborer. His weekly schedule. For those of you that don't know, his weekly schedule. He has multiple home Bible studies throughout the week. The last thing I want to hit, I want to open up these altars. But throughout the week, he has multiple home Bible studies. He finds somebody that comes in and he teaches the Word of God to them. If you've never taught a home Bible study, you can. I want you to know you can. If you're Holy Ghost filled and you believe this message, then you can teach a Bible study. But the law and you believe these people here tonight can teach a Bible study. If you're here tonight and you've never taught a Bible study, I want you to know there's a way to be a laborer. That's a way to plug into the kingdom, to find somebody to open up the Word of God and to show them, walk them through. I just got done with Chris and Tammy. We're not done yet, but we're almost done. I've enjoyed to say, I'm not saying this to, 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 to bring attention to myself, but Chris and Tammy, they came to our church and, and they approached me about a home Bible study. And Chris, I'm not meaning to embarrass you or Tammy, but the change that God has brought in your life is evident. And it's not because of me, but it's the power of the Word of God. And so you know what, church, we're in revival. And we on Sundays, it's hard to find a seat. But my goodness, what would happen? What would happen if in boldness we would say, you know what, I'm going to begin to be a prayer warrior. You know what, I've never taught a Bible. If that's what you're saying tonight, I'm challenging you in the Holy Ghost. Find somebody to teach a Bible study to. You don't have to be a licensed minister to open up the Word of God. No, friend, you got to be a believer. you got to believe the message. And you've got to have compassion for the lost. And find somebody. I mean that. I mean that. If you're here, this last thing I will say, and then I believe we're going to begin to pray. I think I've said that three times. I, I'm sorry. It's 8.32. I'm two minutes over. You see, so many times when we realize we're in a spirit of revival, Brother John, what we do is we get in a power, power-packed, Holy Ghost move of God. We say, okay, God. I'm going to go win 20 people this year. I've never won anybody before, but God, I'm going to go win 20. I've said that before. But you know, it really transformed my life. I read a book. It talked about the power of one soul. Listen, if over the next calendar year, every person in this room brought their attention to one person, one family unit, our church would double in a year. And I'm not talking, I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to bring that up as a way to say, uh, oh, look at our numbers, how they've inflated. No, uh, I'm telling you, there is a harvest uh, that is plenteous. Uh, but if we as the church uh, will be serious uh, about being a laborer, uh, find a prayer closet. Uh, if you've never taught a Bible study, uh, you can do it. 
Mr. Price is going to begin to sing and I want to open up these altars but I only want you to come if you're serious about God I want to go to the next level as a laborer God I'm not interested in just occupying a pew but Lord I want to be a laborer God I want Lord if you'll open up the door I will find God over this next year Lord I'll find one person I'll find one person I'll begin to be a friend to them I'll begin to invest in them I'll begin to be a friend I'll open up the word of God to them Listen, I know it's Wednesday night, but right now, could we just, could we all find a place to pray? God, we want to be a laborer for your kingdom. I want you to know you have what it takes. You have what it takes. 